The following podcast contains naughty language and ridiculous situations. Listener discretion is advised. Well, I got to say, you know, 2020 is in the books and goddamn, just like we thought back in 2019. What a great fucking year that was. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, there was so many advancements uh, in society, um, in healthcare, in, in strides. I mean, the way the way people interact with each other. Even from a retail perspective, my God, it just puts the brotherhood uh, in man. And uh, I just only hope, it's only fucking pray that 2020 is as great and and nurturing as 2020 was. And I'm a liar. Uh, Welcome to the fucking uh, uh, New Year's Eve, New Year's Day. What do you call it? End of year special? Year end. Year end special at Trick or Treat Radio. Welcome to the 2020 year end special Trick or Treat Radio. Trick or Treat Radio is the world's most dangerous podcast and is recorded uh, in front of an undead studio audience here at Castle Wolfenstein, also at the Lair of Lost Swag within the Raven Chateau, also within Casa de Zero, and finally, the Lair of the Gods. He disappeared as we're introducing him but that's okay so we are here we made it through 2020 i think although raven shadow i think you said uh 2020 is happening again i feel like you said 2020 hopefully 2020 can be better are are you saying that we're gonna have to live through it again we should get a mulligan right i mean that should be like it's like when you can get a do-over no no do-overs no do-overs it's in the rear view mirror Let's just search forward to 2021 and never think or talk about 2020 ever again. Well, we have to. That's what this episode's all about. (laughs) (laughs) All right. All right. So for the next couple of hours, we'll be talking about what happened in 2020. But after that, that's it. (laughs) <laughs> I, I have I I have fed up to here with twenty twenty. MZ, and then we're we're gonna record a Patreon episode talking about twenty twenty. Yeah. Oh boy. <laughs> okay. So you know, a few hours, but uh, MZ, come after on. After that, that. Come on, be honest. When when uh when you found out we were doing video for this, you didn't have pants on. No, I didn't have pants on. I had everything on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I what? Yeah. Why wouldn't I be clothed for this? I don't know. You're home. You you never wear clo- clothes at home. You answered what? the famous story of you answering the do- the door pretty much fucking buck naked when Dynamo came to your door like years ago. Well, come on. Dynamo was at the door. How else was <laughs> I supposed to approach him? <laughs> Carefully and with a restraining order. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to jump right into this because we got a lot to do. In uh, not a lot of time, we're doing the top 13 films of 2020. Whew. Not only was it a harrowing year in real life, it was a harrowing year in film, I think. It was, this, is, this is one of the weirdest, I don't know why, but when I was going through and looking at the films, this is like one of the weirdest years in film because it was really hard to pick out, like, like I could make my list, like, a couple weeks from now and it'll probably be different, you know? Like, I just feel like there was, n- like... Not saying there's no good films, but the there was a lot of kind of middling stuff and like decent stuff, but yeah. um, you know there was n- like there wasn't like a lot of amazing films that made it really yeah. difficult. Yeah, it was. It wasn't very. It wasn't as as impactful because yeah. uh, I, I would say that all of our number ones would probably find its way somewhere in the middle of our top thirteen in past years. Uh, That's not to say that the movies sucked. They didn't. There were some very good movies. But uh, there was nothing that really stood out. So picking a number one was was 
a trying cho- was a trying task. Yeah, and ultimately, I mean, we'll we'll get into it as we start talking about it. But ultimately, ultimately for me, number one was pretty easy, um, and number two and three were maybe a little bit more difficult. But other than that, like I would say, like three through thirteen, or sorry, four through four through thirteen probably could be a toss up in 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 some in some cases. So, um, so yeah, it was a really interesting year all around in film and in real life, and um, just. Uh, I don't know, like quickly for the show, I mean, obviously we transitioned from um, two studios because the start of the year we were, you know, like pretty much set with the two studios at the Raven Chateau and also at the at the new Castle Wolfenstein down here. But then we had to introduce basically, you know, two more locations into things, uh, um, you know, around March, April. Well, it sucked too because I mean, I mean, there was some stutter steps, right? I mean, which happens when you're trying to, you know, set up two locations with limited yeah. input. Yeah. But we fought through all that stuff, and then having the rhythm going on, it was nice. But yeah, then right around the anniversary, it was episode 400. That was the last time that uh, there was more than one of oh, us. Oh yeah, that's right. The, you know, yeah, ship. Yeah, four hundred started it all off. Yeah, right. Because it was in. It was started getting weird. We were like, if you if you hear those episodes, hey, Corona's kind of weird. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, okay. Um, and then little by little, that MZ, you stayed behind. You stayed. You oh, on four hundred, but Aries and I were here, and after that, we uh, we were all remote. Yeah, it's uh, you know, so obviously a lot happened this year with that. In, in terms of the amount of films that we did, I actually had a count, and I, I don't have the count here with me now. Um, but I think we did something like 58, 59 films, something like that. Um, uh, I'd say we'll round it up, say 60. I think we did. It was either 58, 59, or 60, uh, because obviously we do two f- in uh, every week in December, and then we also did um, a couple um, of the Patreon shows in which we did two films, and then we also did... Um, it was the eight year anniversary show where we did Lone Tiger and Message from Space, um, with uh, the Hossman and also the Force and Sensitive dudes. Yeah, and, yeah. And I think we did one other double feature. Yeah, I just for the hell of it, we did Blood Machines and Blood Quantum because we couldn't figure out which one to do, and one was a short, so figured just kind of makes sense to, to do. So, so yeah, so we got about fifty eight, fifty nine, maybe sixty in this year. And, um, yeah, it, it, when looking back at the first few that we did in January 2020, I was like, holy shit, that was this year? <laughs> you know, like some of the films like Boar, One Cut of the Dead, uh, Doctor Sleep, for some reason I thought they were last year. So um, made it made it kind of interesting trying to remember um, and compare them to the ones you've seen more recently. So it's always it's always a challenge. But... All right, well, we're going to jump into this, but before we do that, typically we run down the top 13 from the previous year just to kind of refresh everyone. So we'll quickly do that. And last year, the master list, uh, number 13, Triple Threat. Number 12, Under the Silver Lake. Number 11, Polar. And only one person uh, had Polar on the top 13 last year, and it happened to be Aries number one, so it got 13 points. Uh Number 10, Assassination Nation. Number 9, Ready or Not. Number 8, Midsummer. Number 7, The Man Who Killed Hitler and Then the Bigfoot. Number 6, The Dead Don't Die. Number 5, The Lighthouse. Number 4, Parasite. Number 3, Us. Number 2, Climax. And number 1 film of 2019 for our top 13 master list was Dragged Across Concrete. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> crazy right like i i some of those seem like almost like a couple years ago now at this point so but um so that was the top 13 last year we had i don't think any of us i think we all had different number ones last year yeah we we did we all had different number ones which is uh which is interesting i think um, i don't know if it was the first time that's happened but it had to be like one of the first times if not the first so um i have a feeling this year might could be similar i don't know but um the other thing we typically do at the beginning 
of this episode is we tend to guess what we think everyone else's number one will be. Uh-huh. So I'll go first since I wrote mine down already. I usually think of them on the spot, but I, I had to, yeah, I had a few extra minutes to try to think about what I thought everyone else would choose. And what I went with was for Raven Shadow, I chose Why Don't You Just Die? For MZ, One Cut of the Dead. And there was a toss-up for me on Ares, but you know what? I'm just going to go because Ares kind of bucks the trends. I'm going to go with this one. I'm going to say Ares is going to say Uncle Peckerhead. (laughs) So, all right, Raven Shadow. You got some uh, some guesses? Yes. I'm going to go uh, with Johnny, uh, the Doctor Sleep. Uh, for MZ, I'm also going to go with Little Monsters. Um, and for Aries, that's a challenging one. <laughs> yes, he never lets on to us whether he likes the movie or not. <laughs> I yeah. would say Becky because of his love of Kevin James. <laughs> And beards. Yeah. <laughs> and kicking Nazi ass. And kicking Nazi ass. <laughs> and ch- and choke slamming little girls. <laughs> Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> Allegedly. <laughs> All right. Uh, MZ, what are your picks? Uh, my picks are uh, for Raven Shadow, I pick VFW. Okay. For uh, uh, Ares. I picked Color Out of Space, and for you, Wolfie, I selected Possessor. Okay. All right. Some interesting picks here. Um, Aries, how about you? All right. Yeah, see, I I completely forgot about this part, so I didn't even (laughs) give it any thought. Um, But, yeah, just kind of going off the cuff, uh, MZ, I'm going to go with House. Uh, Okay. Oof, Jeebus. Um, Raven Shadow, Rent a Pal. Ooh. And uh, oh, I just had one for you, Wolfie. Where'd it go? I forgot. Damn it! <clears throat> <laughs> I don't think we reviewed that movie yeah. this year. Damn it! What? No. I, oh, you oh. said damn it. <laughs> damn it. <laughs> um. Damn it. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Uh, I'll just say that uh, May the Devil Take You, too. Okay. All right. So I wrote them down just so we can kind of remember those, and we'll see what everyone uh, everyone picks. And uh, also, we do have a few voice messages. I'm going to kind of spread them out throughout the episode. We'll probably do about half the list. Take a take a break, listen to a couple voice messages, do the rest of the list, and then listen to a couple more until we hit our number one and then save the number one for, for last. So, all right. Oh, and then we also have to, I have to calculate the master list, so that might take a little bit of time. So, all right. Well, let's, let's dive in here, and let's start with Monster Zero. What is your number? Actually, uh, before we do this, I always... I, want to don't want to forget let folks know kind of your criteria for picking you know like was it your favorite watches was it the best films yeah. blah, 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 whatever so give a criteria and then your number 13 well my uh, the, sh- the short and sweet of my criteria is that i only put in the films that up until a certain time frame from the year before that i allowed to be on my list so films like films like like what Ari said house will will not will not make the list. Okay. Film uh films like uh, uh sadly, already yeah. Like, <laughs> like <laughs> sadly, we watched it. It's on the list. I yeah. ref- I put in my list films that are relevant of this year. Or if they came out maybe a month or two before you know, uh, November or December of last year. Anything past that is irrelevant. Too MZ, so, too MZ. Uh, but you know, yeah, to yeah, me. I mean, that, yeah. this is how I this is how I do it. So, uh, so no house. Sadly, no Doctor Sleep. No one cut of the dead. No uncut gems. None of that makes it on this list. 
because they because a majority of those films certainly could have been watched last year and they weren't. Well, so well, hold on, hold on one sec. Let me just correct you on one thing: is we watch some of those. Um, one cut of the dead was 2019. Yes, um, uncut gems. We watch it as soon as it was available to watch on VOD because it was in theaters. And you guys don't like to go to the fucking movie, so Excuse me, pandemic. <laughs> no, that was a yeah, Feb- that was a Fe- that was February. I knew it was coming. <laughs> <laughs> so now you could have stopped it. And Doctor Sleep, we did as soon as it hit VOD. So. The, you know, just want I don't not necessarily correcting you, but I think you're disqualifying some films that should be on there based on your criteria. Because we so don't not correct, correcting you because you guys don't Dr. go you guys don't go to the theater very often, and we no. don't do theater theatrical releases, so we do them when they have VOD. Doctor Sleep came out like in the middle of last year, didn't it? Or or 2019, I should say. I'll have to double check. I th- I could have sworn we did it as soon as it dropped on VOD, though. We did. Yeah. yeah. It was theatrical, yeah, but... Uh, it... Well, regardless, I, st- I still don't... Yeah, I actually, have a... Dr. Sleep came out uh, January 21st on VOD, and, w- and we did it uh, right at the beginning of 2020. So, yeah, it's... That fits... that We did it as soon as it hit VOD. So hopefully I'll have to read you your it... list. <laughs> yeah. Do you need a minute to do it over again? <laughs> no, I'm not going to redo my list. This is my list. <laughs> <laughs> all right well go ahead you, you got fucked up criteria but go for it <laughs> it's not fucked up criteria <laughs> all right so i'm going first yep. all right yep uh okay so my first film number 13 uh it is is quite a journey uh into uh a far off land that uh takes place where um, uh, what's the word? Uh, inheritance is involved, where uh, rituals are involved, where a lot of violence is involved. Uh, it's very well acted. I love the acting in this. The settings are nice. They're really good. Um, and it has some really great atmosphere in it, too. Uh, a, a very heavy sense of dread as the film continues on. And uh, it doesn't let up until the very last scene. And it's really, really a fantastic movie. So my number 13 film is Impedigore. All right. Impedigore is MZ's number 13. All right. Let's go with uh, Aries, your criteria, and then your number 13. Um, so I'll anything we watch for the show is... I'm considering it. I will knock out anything we do as a commentary on Patreon or anything like that. Um, but anything we watch in the show, regardless of when it came out, I will consider it. Um, as far as picking the list this year, I took the list and um, looked up the movies. And if I didn't immediately recognize the movie from the poster art, I disqualified it because it did not stick in my brain enough for me to even consider it. Why, why look into it any further than that? Then I put the list aside for a couple of days and came back to it and went through and based on solely on the movies that I remembered by the name alone, I was considering for my top 13 and then I was going to go from there. It turned out that I came up with 13 titles that stuck with me. So I just moved on from there and disregarded anything else. So that was how I was thinking of it, that these movies didn't stick with me enough to justify being in my top 13. Um, And... Then it was just a matter of putting them in order. Uh, I already, from those lists, I had my number one all set, so it was just a matter of arranging them from there. And it just so happened my number 13 was also the first one we watched of the year. It was a decent monster movie, Boar. All right. Uh, number 13 for Aries was Boar. All right, Raven Shadow. I like that. Um but yeah, kind of similar where I, I took my list and I made like a little like a little asterisk on the movies that I instantly recognize. I'm like, okay, this will probably be in my in my top thirteen. Um, and then uh, Mary and I, we were like Batman in the Batcave. We were voice analyzing. We ended up going on YouTube and picking up like clips and playing some trailers. 
to see what kind of jog memory. Because, I mean, movie titles don't always stand out like they fucking, you know what I mean? So you got to figure out what the fuck is this about? Um, normally, I try to not put a movie on my top 13 that is something I would have watched if it wasn't for the show. Like, I think we had, we had Guardians of the Galaxy on one year that we did a field trip. Um, we did an old school trick or treat yeah, radio. Yeah. And like, I would see that regardless. You know what I mean? But um, this was a very weird year for pictures. And I think looking back, there are some weird gems in here. Um, I would say it's, this is a year that we saw a lot of overlap. I'm looking at you, fucking Lovecraftian themes. Like, we saw a lot of fucking Lovecraftian themes this fucking year. But, um, hey, my first, my number 13 was a weird little picture about society, class, and uh, dinner time. Uh, so I'm going to pick uh, the platform. All right. Uh, Raven Shadow selects uh, the platform as his number 13. All right. So for me, um, I... Unlike at least two of you, I remember every single movie we watched. <laughs> I would go through the titles. I'm like, yep, okay, I remember that. I remember that. I remember that. Uh, so I remember every film that we watch. Um, but, w- you know, the how it resonates with me changes, right? Like, for instance, like, uh, you know, like... I'm trying to think of a movie that definitely won't like Death Semper. No, <laughs> I don't think anyone thinks that's going to be on my on my list. Um, <laughs> that didn't resonate with me. It didn't. It didn't. You know, it didn't. It didn't stick with me. I'm not going to really remember much about that film beyond uh, this year. And so for me, it's a film that I might want to go back to and watch, or it's a film that I'm excited to tell someone else about. Right. So that's one of the things I think that we've. You know, in within our s- small community, I feel we've been able to champion some films that people may not have seen, uh, and may not, and might not have even known about, and like movies like um, I don't know, like The Void. Like we really pushed that one hard. John Arowski's Dune with our boy Steven Scarlatta. Um, Miami Connection. Miami Connection, yeah. Like so, some ones like that. Like I feel like I love having a, a film that really resonates and and is is very much inspired by the things that we like and something we're excited to talk about. So for me, if there's something like that, even if it's, even if there's like a movie that may be an actual better film, sometimes a a movie that is a movie that I really think people should see might kind of go above because, you know, just because I feel like I want to kind of tout it and push it because I think it's a really great movie that, that desires, um, you know, that, that, that needs people, people's eyes on it. So, uh, you know, so it's not necessarily the best films of the year, like the best technically made films. It's, uh, the films that really stuck with me, films that I really want to recommend to people and films that I think are just, just outstanding. So my number 13 is actually one that was someone else's 13. I, I went back and forth on this one, but I remember really digging this one. And, uh, this, this uh, um, this film is directed um, by um, crap. I forget what uh, country he's from, but um, the director's name is Jocko Anwar, and uh, the film is Impedagor, which uh, MZ mentioned as his number thirteen. Uh, Indo- yeah, he's from Indonesia, so that's uh, he's an Indonesian uh, filmmaker, and we've seen a couple of his films. Uh, so far, that I think he's I think he's a really great director. He did Satan Slaves, which is a film that we did a couple years ago, and uh, also in Pedagore, which uh, had some great imagery and some really good scares. So um, that's one that I think a lot of people should check out. So if you haven't already, so there you go. My number thirteen is in Pedagore. Now let's go back to MZ and hear your number twelve. My number twelve is a subgenre that has been done to death and we always mention that every time we review a film like this however the writing the acting the humor involved especially the humor so funny so entertaining so fine so, so elated. <laughs> 
and uh, just an awful lot of fun to watch. Uh, another film that takes place out in uh, in a distant land, uh, and it has a very candy colored uh, uh, feel about it. Uh, the lead is adorable as hell, uh, and uh, quite a sw- quite a switch from a film that we reviewed of hers the year before, but she's so adorable here. You just fall in love with her. And, uh, it also has some supporting acting in it, which is <laughs> exceptionally hilarious. Uh, but, uh, it's not often that you find a zombie film that's willing to, uh, be a zombie film, be funny yet be complete, you know, be somewhat separate from the rest at the same time, because it's so, I, th- I think what it does is that it just kind of defies the rules that we have created about zombie films, especially with the influx that we've had over the past 20 years, uh, that they're not afraid to just go out and make this film. And I loved it. I thought it was fantastic. I loved it. This is little monsters. All right, MZ, and uh, you were referring to her previous film that we did uh, being Us, right? Us, right, yeah. And um, let me see. I was going to – I I always screw up her name, but uh, I wanted to look at the spelling. Lupita nu- Nuango. Yeah, Nuango, that's it. Yeah, so Lupita Nuango. And, yeah, uh, Little Monsters was a lot of fun. Yeah. So – Let's keep moving on. And Aries, your number 12. Um, one thing I forgot to mention with my picks, one of the big things that it dis- deciding factor is rewatchability for me. Yeah. <clears throat> and I'm starting to lose my voice. This is perfect. Uh, <coughs> um, yeah, more wait, whiskey. whiskey. More whiskey. I haven't <laughs> had any today. That's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> um, <clears throat> my number 12 is as was suggested as being my number one. So someone was just a little bit off, but this is, um, I don't know. I really like this movie. I like the, uh, the tone of it, the pacing of it, the characters in it. This movie is Becky. All right. Uh, Aries chose Becky as his number 12 Raven shadow. Your number 12. You know, uh, it's fair to say my number 12 was already been said. Um, and I'm not going to, talk about it as long as uh, one of my uh, co-conspirators. But, um, yeah, I, I think it's fair to say that, that a lot of zombie shit is fucking played out, but there was some uh, some fun uh, surprises in this. We had a lot of gags. Who was the fucking guy? The fucking asshole? Oh, that dude, yeah. yeah. Fuck, I Josh, can't remember his name. Josh Gad, was that who it was? Josh Gad, that's it. Josh Gad could do no wrong. Is that the quote? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> but yeah, man, uh, little uh, little monsters was uh, was a fun fun little zombie picture. My twelve. Little mobsters. Mobsters. Yeah, <laughs> that's gonna be Raven Shadow's film. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Raven Shadow chose Little Monsters as his number twelve, and my number twelve is. Uh, so, okay, so this is one I think we did about halfway, roughly about halfway through the year. And I think at the time I was actually a little bit disappointed with the film because I had slightly higher hopes uh, for it based on their previous work. Um, and it was uh, directed by Severin Fiala and Veronica Franz. And the name of this movie was The Lodge and it starred uh, Riley Keough. And uh, the more I thought about it, the more I really dug this movie and sort of the isolation and a lot of the ideas and concepts behind it. And I think as 2020 um, <laughs> went on, I think this movie resonated more and more with me. So, um, yeah, so my number 12 would be The Lodge. All right, MZ, let's do your number 11. My number 11 is with Tranquility. And uh, uh, just uh, almost a fantasy sort of uh, experience, but definitely deep-rooted in horror. Uh, 
it's it's almost a body horror. Actually, it is a body horror in a way, I should say. Um, and one from in an area that you would least expect. Uh, it's extraordinarily well shot. There's one scene in this movie that is just it just blows my mind every time I see it because I have watched the film a couple of times since, and uh, or at least that scene I should say. Um, uh, it's it's got some good veteran actors in it, some up and coming uh, young uh, actors and actresses coming up in this in this film as well. Uh, it's got a very heavy Lovecraftian feel to it. Uh, it it's 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 gross. It's gooey. It's sticky. And uh, it, it's a tough film to shake. And uh, knowing that, but it was also filmed in my home state of Massachusetts. That is the Beach House. Oh, okay, I thought you were actually going going. Uh... You z- I thought you were zigging and you zagged. All right, MZ uh, chose the beach house as his number eleven. All right, Aries, how about yours? Um, yeah, my next pick. It's kind of a it's a crime story, a little bit uh, out of the ordinary for us to do it. Some people compared it to uh, Tarantino with its style, which is not entirely untrue. But it was uh, an enjoyable movie. It kept you a little bit guessing, but uh, some good action in it. And that was Arkansas. Or Arkansas. What is it? Arkansas. <laughs> oh, God. Arkansas. <laughs> it's like the R. Kelly of states. <laughs> I, was just, yeah. I don't know why that always just comes into my head to say it like that. <laughs> Arkansas. Arkansas. Beautiful. That's beautiful. <laughs> All right. Now, now it's time for you to open up your brain, open up your head so the brain can jump out and hit Raven Shadow. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Raven Shadow, your number eleven. So listen, uh, let's get into some interesting pictures that we kind of got into. Maybe it was set in a different time, um, and maybe it's the fact that you know I, I think we all know about 2020. It's uh, it's easy to get lonely, um, and it, you know it might be nice to have a little fucking VHS little bud you could put on. Um, <laughs> I talk to you. When you're lonely, you know what I mean. You're sad and it's cold out. So uh, yeah, man, uh, the Renapal with the the Will Wheaton man um, playing kind of like a virtual uh, VHS douche uh, with a eh, it, okay, had a little problem at the end. You know, it was, it, was, it was some drama in that picture. So yeah, Renapal. <laughs> it's funny your your Renapal is the Black Hat tapes now. <laughs> <laughs> rent a rent a pals. <laughs> All right, Raven Shadow. His number eleven was Rent a Pal, and let's see, my number eleven. This is a film that definitely stuck with me, and I thought it was a great sort of portrayal of dementia. And I just thought that there's just something about this film that really s- kind of stuck with me, and I, I really dug it uh that would be the film from natalie erica james entitled relic uh which we watch kind of like mid to um second half of the year but i really dug this and i thought that it was uh just such a such a cool f- um you know they, they showed the different generations of three different generations of women and and sort of the problems that they, they felt had to deal with and and grief and i just thought it was a, just a beautiful sort of portrayal of grief and, and dementia. So um, Relic would be my number 11. All right, MZ. We're getting out of the double digits, so let's hear your number 10. Yes, we are. My number 10. Uh, I was locked in on this film the first 30 seconds because of its camera work. And then it started messing me up. And I uh, then... I quickly locked in to what it was doing. And I wasn't sure when the big reveal was going to happen, but it took forever. Uh, and uh, with that, when the big reveal came out, I I never saw that reveal coming. 
it was a it was an ending that came out of nowhere and i was satisfied with that ending it's very well acted the chem work is is really quite good and uh a lot of emotion a lot of heart was put in into this and uh also very reminiscent of kind of like the times that we live in now uh if you keep a very careful eye on it uh and uh i just love this movie it was fantastic number 10 antebellum all right uh mz's number 10 was antebellum all right aries your number 10 um this movie i was kind of i was a little iffy on when we first started to watch it and it it, it didn't grab me right away but as it progressed it really it drew me in with the uh kind of uh, waterfall of uh, events that kept on transpiring. It all started with one minor thing, and it just escalated and escalated until it was just full-blown madness, and it was done so well. This movie is a 12-hour shift. All right. Cool. So Aries, his number 10 is 12-hour shift. Let's hear from Raven Channel, number 10. Yo, my number 10. Yo. Uh, yo. Uh, <laughs> serves as a uh epic battle with a uh you know i don't know if you really call her a final girl but i think you could definitely see her as an origin story uh to who she becomes down the road and i fucking hate nazis but uh if you <laughs> like it she's dispatched with uh some home alone uh in the woods style uh machinations uh, i would check out becky you're checking out Becky? Well, when she gets older. <laughs> Maybe the sequel. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> All right. Raven Jail's number 10 was Becky. Now, my number 10. Uh, this is a film we actually just, uh, just recently watched. And... I there was just some scenes in this that were absolutely stunning for me. I, I just love the way it was shot. It's also a first time director, which you know to me was uh, very impressive. And the more I thought about this movie, the more I just wanted to watch it again, and the more I wanted to just kind of see what what the the director had in mind because there's there's enough on the surface there that is is enjoyable but then if you start digging underneath uh there's a lot more to it and i actually was reading some articles and uh, with uh interviews with the director and really kind of uh made me want to watch it again and this is a film we just talked about on our last show and that would be the film uh directed um by Roma, uh, romola garai and the film is amulet um, really, really dug a lot of what they were doing. Definitely f felt a little bit more original than some of the other stuff that we may have seen this year, and that really kind of stood out to me. Uh, so for me, Amulet was my number 10. Uh, MZ, let's hear your number 9. Well, before I do that, let me just say that, and, and I'm not attributing it to what my choice here is for number 9 is to say, if I bring it up, I think this year we reviewed more films from first time directors than any other year. Could be right. I mean, we hit, well, I mean, we said first time directors quite a bit, uh, in 2020. So yeah, if anything good came out of it, it would be that. All right. So my number nine is a film that deals with cults and the dangers of cults. Uh, it is seclude. There's a lot of seclusion involved. A lot of um, uh, brainwashing involved, uh, which is synonymous with cults, really. <laughs> uh, but it is very effective. Uh, I think all the performances were handled very, very well, and with a lot of care too, because uh, you want you want the cult aspect to come through but you don't want it to come through in a way that would be deemed as being um violently dangerous uh even though in this case that 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 is what it is but it was it was done with a lot of care involved and uh i appreciated that um uh, a very good movie 
one that should be seen, and I I think I'm going to see it again at some point. I'd like to, and that is called The Other Lamb. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. Um, I don't that that's a review I don't remember a lot of, so I don't remember like hearing a lot of positive talk. But um, I could be wrong. I mean, you know, sometimes I just completely forget what we what we say on episodes because I'm so focused on the production of it. But yeah, that was kind of a cool little film. So, all right, MZ's number nine is the other lamb. Arius, let's hear yours. Um, <clears throat> mine was um, it's actually a three part TV show that was made into a movie. Um, I think that kind of gives it away right there, but it was so beautifully, uh, the visuals were so beautiful. Um, even if the story sucked to watch it alone would be worth it, but it was a good story. And there was a lot going on to the extent that I believe at the time I said, I wanted to rewatch it and I still haven't had the opportunity, but it is my goal to rewatch this and to take it all in again. This is blood machines. Yeah, it was a really cool little short. Definitely. All right, Aries chose Blood Machines as his number nine. Rib Shadow. Part of doing, you know, the show and having these discussions about films is watching something that there's no fucking way I would have watched on my own. Um, if, you know, I had four movies to pick, you know, this wouldn't be one of them. You know, it was if I was, you know, airplane that was going down, I wouldn't pick this for my in-flight movie. But I did see it and I was really pleasantly surprised and it made me think about it. I think we had a great discussion. I think we had a great uh, takeover uh, guest for it. And I quote it actually once a week. And that would be fucking Phantom Thread, man. I fucking wow. Wow. But I'll be less ambiguous. Yeah. <laughs> That's why you chose it, because of the quote. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, Raven Shadow chose the Phantom Thread. That would not uh, pass MZ's uh, criteria. Definitely not. <laughs> Definitely not. All right. So, Phantom Thread. I'm also keeping score as I go, so if, I, if I'm kind of killing time, you guys know why I'm... Uh, keep it score so I can add them up quickly. All right. Uh, Rave Chato, Phantom Thread, number nine. So we'll go to my number nine. And uh, this one has already been mentioned, so I'm not going to say too much more about it. But this one had such a such a cool kind of high concept to it that it felt like, despite being something that we've seen before, the way it was presented, I felt um, was kind of fresh and, and different. And it was a film that was just on Netflix. So it had actually been out for a little bit before we had um, did it on the show. But I'm glad that we did because it was a really interesting picture. And uh, that would be The Platform, as Michael Raven Shadow had already mentioned previously, uh, directed by Galder Gaztella Urusha. Um, And I think it had a really cool concept. And I'm I'm actually looking forward to seeing more from this director because I really, um, really dug what he had to what he had to say in it. so, uh, And it was a, s- a film of Spanish origin. So hopefully we get to see more from the director. All right. So mine was The Platform. Moving on. MZ, you're on uh, your number eight. Number eight. Whew. We're blowing right through these, huh? I know. Nice. You must I be like happy this. about that. Yeah. I'm static uh okay my number eight is a very funny movie i laughed from first frame to last uh Police academy with... 2 isn't on the list this year <laughs> well it should be <laughs> <laughs> uh uh it deals with uh ghost ghosts uh and possession uh, it is a very colorful film, uh, although set in a very drab location. Uh, but it is entertaining as hell. I, I just it, there's a certain amount of uh, originality to be really admired here uh, for 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 a ghost movie because it what because it's just so. Uh, it's it's different in the case, in the fact that it's just so 
what's the word I'm looking for? Um, I don't want to say I don't want to say bland because that's not, that's not the right word. Uh, I don't know what the right word would be, <laughs> it, it, but it it just seems to work because it's so, uh, deadpan. It's very deadpan. Okay, oh, okay. there we go. I know what you mean now. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it, it was hysterically funny. I enjoyed the hell out of this movie. And I strongly suggest everyone look at going out and streaming Extraordinary. Oh, actually, I thought you were going to say something else. Yeah, okay. Extraordinary. I zigged when I zagged again. Yeah. You're, you're going to be Dolph Ziggler by the end of this. <laughs> Dolph Zagler. <laughs> <laughs> Dolph Zagler. All right, MZ's number eight was extraordinary. All right, Aries, your number eight. Um, mine is another uh, crime movie that was uh, very well paced. The uh, only flaw in this movie is it tried to go a little too big during its climax and was just uh, one punching its way through all the bad guys at the end. But other than that, this was a solid movie right from right from the get go. This is uh, best bust. By bus, excuse me. By bus. All right. By bust is Aries number eight. Michael Raven Shadow, I want to hear your number eight. Oh, man. Uh, You know, I love, you know, old timers getting their drink on in bars. uh, (laughs) Um, (laughs) Maybe it's because I missed the uh, fishing trip with the vets this year with my dad, but uh, my number eight is the. the, expendables in real life kind of thing of um of uh of cool actors so yeah uh vfw man uh old time vets versus uh drug dealing (laughs) douchebags that's a fucking uh synopsis see all right so raven shadow his number eight was vfw so someone chose uh let me see someone chose vfw as mz you chose raven shadow um you chose VFW as Raven Shadow's number one, so that uh, one is disqualified. <laughs> All right. Raven Shadow chose VFW as his number eight. All right, my number eight. Okay. This one, uh, let me just pull up um, some info on this one real quick. This one I thought was a cool little... Um, Indie picture by the um, duo who did the film The Battery. That would be Jeremy Gardner and Christian Stella. And uh, the film stars uh, Jeremy Gardner and Bria Grant, uh, who directed 12-Hour Shift. So she comes back around here again. And uh, I thought this was a really interesting way to do a monster flick. So in it, we have... um, you know, not going to give you the whole synopsis, but Jeremy Gardner plays Hank and his girlfriend has kind of left him and then he's being attacked by these this monster. Um, so I just thought, once again, it was a great, great kind of parable of grief and loss. And I thought it was really interesting the way that they put the film together and it really kind of stuck with me. So, yeah, for me, my number eight would be After Midnight. All right. Well, now might be a good time to play some voice messages because we have uh, we actually got a couple more in uh, while I was while we were doing this, so um, we got a few more. So I want to kind of get to get to them and start playing some. I think what we'll do is we'll start out uh, from the future. We'll we'll go to our boy Tim from Melbourne, Tim yep. Chuma. And uh, see what he has for his top five of 2020. And actually, let me just set this up. Basically, the way what I did was just asked people to um, give us a top five. Could be anything. Could be top five films of the year. Could be to- top five first time watches. Uh, top five books. Top five albums. Uh, whatever. It, it completely up up to uh, the listener. Whatever they wanted to do, give us a top five. So let's see. I always love doing these, and I'm, I'm curious to see what everyone has for a top five. So let's check in with uh, Tim from Melbourne. Bumbleo. Tim from Melbourne here again. I'm just going to go with top five for the best of the year. Uh, not really in any order. Um, first one would be the Darth Vader comic, which I've enjoyed reading all of, which I don't usually get to do, but I'm reviewing them. 
I've also read the Dr. Aphra and Bounty Hunters, but the Darth Vader one's the best one. Next one's the Canon Film Guide, Volume 1, 1980 to 1984. <clears throat> um, it's got a whole heap of films you know and a lot of ones you don't. I've mainly only read the parts of the films I liked and had a lot of stuff in there. Um, and I read, I've read, <coughs> reviewed one called The Games That Weren't, about all ga video games that have been abandoned in development for some reason. A bit hard to get through some of them because it's the same thing over and over for a lot of the older arcade ones. But the, the newer ones seem to be interesting. Um, another one's a movie called Ashens and the Polybius Heist. It was a YouTuber who's made two movies now and this is a, another ensemble one. And the last one's from the Melbourne International Film Festival called the documentary about the Go-Go's, about the, the band from the 80s and they, they still had each other's guts but they decided to get back together for money uh, in the 2010s. Alright, thanks. Bye. Awesome. Great list from uh, Tim from Melbourne. Uh, and I like cool. I like that you mix it up and did just different types of media. I, I, that's that's awesome. Uh, anyone a uh, big fan of the Go Go's? You guys want to see that documentary? Sounds pretty interesting. I wouldn't mind watching it. Yeah, yeah. I I definitely like uh, music documentaries in general. So even if it's not a band that I'm all that much in love with, I'd still check it out. So uh, that sounds like a good one. And uh, yeah, he's been digging the Star Wars comics put out by Marvel, uh, Darth Vader, Doctor Aphra. So it sounds like some good stuff. I know Tim uh, does reviews for them as well uh, i think you post them on the fib so if anyone's interested uh, you can check them out i don't have the website offhand uh in the future tim feel free to uh leave it in your voice messages if you want plug your plug your shit man all right cool thanks tim <coughs> and we appreciate you giving us that top five that was a great list uh let's now check in with our boy raven chow's boy he is the elizabeth of uh, Trick or Treat Radio. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that would be Evil Corny. Hey guys, this is Evil Corny. Um, my top five films of this year, of 2020, are um, The Banker. It's a uh, true story starring Samuel Jackson and Anthony Mackie. Um, Possessor, which you all um, reviewed a couple weeks ago. I really enjoyed that film. Uncorked, it's a Netflix um film that's still streaming um the next is la originals and that's a documentary that's on netflix right now and color out of space which might be one of my favorite horror films of the last couple of years wow. uh you all have a good one uh happy new year to everybody evil corny out what up raven shadow <laughs> always, always gonna wait till the end. It, it, Corny's has like a like an after credit uh, scene on all yeah. of his voice messages. <laughs> Have you heard that about the Bombaleo Initiative, Raven Shadow? Oh, all the time. <laughs> uh, all right, Corny, it's a great list and a uh, couple. Let's see, two of them. I th uh, I forget what his number five was now, but I think we did two of the films that he mentioned. Uh, on the show, at least definitely the number one. I know, I know we did. But Possessor, possess. Yep. Okay. Possessor and Color Out of Space, uh, both great, great choices, and uh, definitely very, very uh, good films. I'll be curious to see if uh, they appear on any of our lists. Speaking of which, uh, I think we will continue on with our lists, and let's see. We left off with number eight, so let's go back to the lists. And MZ, give us your number seven. My number seven is one that was already mentioned. Uh, I think this movie has a great sense of dread involved. Uh, it's another film that deals with uh, cults. Uh, this one is dealt with it a little bit more directly, I think, uh, as far as uh, history of cults are concerned and what we know of them and what we expect of them. Um, it's very well acted, uh, very isolated, and having a set in the wintertime certainly amplifies that. Uh, and things build up to a crescendo that just, it, it, it's very, 
very riveting. Uh, one that I think that should be seen, like I said, it was mentioned before, my number seven is The Lodge. Nice. All right, MZ's number seven, uh, Lodge. So uh, let's continue on. And Aries, let's hear your number seven. Uh, my number seven is a, is a sequel or continuation of a story because it is only sequel in title alone loosely. And the biggest problem with this movie is that it was a sequel to such a great movie. This movie was an okay follow-up to that movie, but it was, it was just a, it was a good movie if you look at it on its own. I know people on the show had a problem with it. I did not. I thought this was a very good movie, very enjoyable. This was Peninsula. Oh, once again, Aries zagged when uh, I thought he was going to zig. Uh, but okay, Aries uh, number seven was Peninsula, and that is his number seven. Uh, Raven Shadow, what's yours? Dolph Zagnut. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it, my my number seven was mentioned before, uh, and you know I always get excited when we can have something with more uh, kind of current crime roots uh, in some of the films that we discuss, um, and I'm even more excited when my main man uh, Vince Vaughn plays a drug dealer uh, named Frog. Uh, <laughs> Tension, twins, uh, it was a lot, a lot going on there. And so my number seven is Arkansas. <laughs> Arkansas. Oh, Arkansas. <laughs> oh, Arkansas. <laughs> oh, right. Arkansas. Arkansas. All right, so Raven Shadow's number seven, Arkansas. All right, my number seven. Let me go back to my list here. Okay, this is another film uh, that's already been mentioned. And uh, it is, this film is directed by probably one of the more uh, prolific directors in the last several years. Um, he's done several films that we have done on the show. And uh, this one definitely kind of took it, took it out a, a different, different route uh, from, from some of his other stuff. It was a little bit more in your face, a little bit more action. Uh, from director Joe Bigas, this is VFW, and that is my number seven. I thought it was a really fun little flick, and as Raven Shadow mentioned, the you know the cast, especially with a uh, uh, fucking Martin Cove who is uh, blowing up now uh, with the co- with the Cobra Kai. Uh, it was a good good seeing him and, and a lot of the other folks that were in that. It was a uh, you know great ensemble cast and a really fun f- flick. So. VFW is my number seven. All right, MZ. Let's go number six. The Kovakai. Kovakai. Uh, okay. My number six uh, deals with possession that cannot be controlled. Wait, is it reverse exorcism? No. <laughs> no. Uh, it deals with possession that, uh, that you cannot control. Uh, you have no way of 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 gaining your faculties when science is involved and the that possession happens through science and it is violent it is bloody it is awesome it has one of the best performances of the year in my opinion uh it's got a great story and uh you know what? I wouldn't mind a sequel to this. I would like to see a sequel to this. I would love to see an expansion of this story. Uh, violent as hell. Crazy gory. Must watch Possessor. All right. Uh, MZ, his number six was Possessor. Uh, let's hear from Aries now. Um, my next pick was a movie that at first I was not digging it. I was very bored by it and didn't didn't like it. It was mainly because I didn't understand it. It wasn't until the halfway point when things were revealed did I get it and really started to like this movie. Um, because of the way it was shot, because of how they did it, and because they kept it a secret up until the halfway point of what they were doing. This movie is one cut of the dead. 
All right. One Cut of the Dead from Ares. That is his number six. Raven Shadow. Uh, my number six uh, involves uh, Satanism, possessions, and, uh, you know, uh, a disgraced priest. Not in the way you think. Um, not that way. But uh, I enjoy this picture a lot. It's a uh, metamorphosis. All right. Metamorphosis was Raven Shadows number six. I like that. All right. I had to write it down. You're so quick. All right. Metamorphosis. Um, <laughs> now let's do my number six. All right. So this one here, this was this was one that was kind of tough for me to slot in. I didn't know where it was going to sit. I had a feeling it probably would be in the top five, top six. And the more I kept kind of thinking about some of these other films that are ahead of it, the more they really kind of stood out for different reasons. I think that this film is, is a return um, for a director who hasn't worked in a very, you know, in a, in a long time as a director. So this to me is a huge uh, win for him. And it's a big win for us as viewers to have him back making flicks and to have him make the, a flick at such a high level um, after you know, after taking su- such a long time between films, I think is is really awesome, and uh, we're gonna get more Lovecraft from him because he's uh, doing a, kind of an unofficial uh, trilogy of Lovecraft f- uh, pictures, and uh, that is uh, director Richard Stanley's Color Out of Space, mm. and uh, that is my number six. All right, so before we hit the top five, maybe we'll take another break and uh, do a couple of voice messages. Not a break. We'll, we'll listen to some voice messages. We got uh, a couple more to get to, or a few more to get to. So we'll do uh, two more now, and then uh, we'll continue on with the list. So first up, let's hear from Marion, and let's see what she has for a top five. Hi, guys. This is Marion, and I'm leaving you a voicemail to discuss my top five movies that I've seen this year. They aren't all from this year, um, but uh, I saw them this year. So let me start with number five, How Zoo. Um, just, I liked it because it was just so innovatively weird. Um, and it makes me think it inspired uh, David Lynch, at least in a small way. Um, so that was great. Um, number four is Antebellum, because slavery is a fucking nightmare that requires an uh, intense lack of of empathy um, in society. And I think that if the Trump presidency and the pandemic have shown us anything, that there is quite an absence of empathy in today's society. Um, So it's just a terrifying concept. Um, Number three was Color Out of Space because it was beautiful. um, And because it was the first direct adaptation of a Lovecraft work that actually scared me. Um, number two was porno because um, it just made me feel nostalgic for um, the you know the end of my high school beginning of my college days when I worked at that movie theater. Um, just you know, it was just a great time and and this movie brought me back. Plus, uh, you know the major but uh, somehow squeamishly funny testicular trauma was a bonus. I guess I don't know. Um, and my favorite number one movie, Dog Tooth. Uh, was from MZ's wow, horror yeah. challenge in uh, horror movie challenge in October, um, and it was just so twisted, um, an exploration and like horror and manipulation of captive children. It was just, just the concept was so horrible. Um, so that's it. That's my top five that I've seen this year. I hope I'm sending this to the right show because I was a little confused about which one needs what. Um, okay. I hope you guys have a great new year. Had a great new year. It was great talking to some of you at the uh, Blackout Tapes. And uh, we'll see you shortly in the future. Okay. Bye. All right. Great list, Mary. All right. Uh, MZ, one of your picks from uh, the uh, MZ uh, Halloween Film Challenge ended up being... Yeah. Yeah. Can you dig it? (laughs) 
Rave uh, offset, offset by offset by uh, bringing up the te- te- testicular nut squeeze uh, <laughs> from porno. I, I thought I forgot all about that. Now it's in my brain again. <laughs> <laughs> Rave chat. What, did, I can't remember. Did you watch Dogtooth with Marion? Yeah, I was. Uh, I was coming down. I was doing a few things, so I would catch. I would catch snippets of it. I and mean, what the fuck are you watching? Uh, yeah, it was weird. It was a weird picture. I saw a good chunk of it. It was odd. <laughs> it was odd. <laughs> odd. All right, Marion. Thank you for calling in and uh, leave us your top five. Great list. Uh, let's check in with first time Mike. What's up, Trick or Treat family? This is first time Mike. This is my top five random things I've watched on YouTube this year. Nice. Because let's be honest, everybody has a bit more free time. Uh, number one, the Toei Tokazatsu World Official Channel. And you, it has everything from Super Sentai shows to the Metal Cop shows to weird uh, kid shows that uh, make me feel kind of funny because the actress is really hot in that outfit. Or, uh, But uh, it's a, just a massive amount of uh, free content from anime to live action shows. Just really fun. Uh, number two, uh, Bootleg Zone. It's a long-running series from uh, a YouTube creator named uh, Felon Porteous, uh, and this deals with a lot of bootleg toys uh, from around the world. But uh, a lot of my favorite episodes are the uh, Masters of the Universe uh, and uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle ripoffs. Uh, there's a couple of the weird transforming ones, too, but uh, it's a fun uh, time waster. I can listen to the, the guy's kind of goofy, but, I mean, his collection looks amazing. Uh, number three, Fate's Take. It's a uh, a riff track uh, slash uh, MST3K uh, reviewer. Uh, she uh, deals mostly with those, and uh, I really enjoy her videos. Uh, sometimes she's a little sporadic, but the c- amount of content she puts out is pretty good. I'm um, especially fond. She's done a, a review uh, a show about every riff track's short reviewed. And she's up to episode 44, and uh, it's chock full of, uh, you know, partly part of the episodes and uh, just a, a good overview of uh, of those shows. Uh, I recommend her work. Number four, Bedtime Stories. It's a uh, a channel that deals with a lot of, like, uh, true tales of the uh, unexplained from, like, uh, UFOs, cryptids. All of that, but what makes it really great is is the the narration work is excellent, and they have every episode has has uh, drawn uh, illustrations as they're telling the story, which add a, add, add a lot of atmosphere uh, to the to the pro- proceed, proceedings. Uh, a fun one they have uh, uh, they have on YouTube, and they have a a podcast based off their work, but I recommend watching it on YouTube because then you get the full visual, uh, the visual as well. Uh, and number five, just random crap. I've had an excellent find. I've watched everything on YouTube from like random uh, horror movies, uh, the unsold pilot of a TV series based off the Omen from '95, which is totally bizarre. Uh, the Swamp Thing cartoon that uh, Michael Raven Shadow might remember. I do, and uh, just a, a bunch of mo- of TV shows from around the world that I thought I'd never seen, and uh, so that's my list for that one. Uh, for you know, he, if you want to listen to me, I'm I usually do voicemail on Trick or Treat Radio. If I, if I like a review, I I send a review. If there's like uh, some random weird questions or they do on a subject I know a little bit about, I'll ramble on for a bit like I am doing here. But you can listen to me on Trick or Treat Radio. I do a lot of voicemails. <laughs> Eventually, I'm thinking of maybe doing a podcast yeah. on my own, but that's still in the future. I'd um, like to close this out with a uh, a little poem I did called O2 2020. It begins like this. Hey, 2020, kiss my ass. <laughs> it's free verse. First time, Mike, out. Bye. <laughs> That's the best poem I've heard all year. <laughs> I don't think I could have do, could have done better. No. <laughs> that was amazing. Uh, first time, Mike. And that's a, it's a cool list. Uh, you know, like, it's unbelievable. Like, what did we ever do without YouTube? Do you guys, like, remember the days before there was a YouTube? What the fuck did we, like, just watch while we're just killing time? We fucking would put up a blank VHS tape in and we'd record random shit and make archives of uh, mixtapes. 
<laughs> I, I believe he watched the manatee over and over again a bunch of times. Oh, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where blubber to keep me warm in the water. <laughs> Get a, get a job. <laughs> I think you're right. I think we did watch the Manatee over and over and over. That, or we watch like wrestling, or um, or cable. What? What's that? What's cable? Yeah. <laughs> that's weird. <laughs> Yeah, it's uh, but that's a it's a great it's a great way to kind of attack the list uh, for some Mike, and we appreciate it as always. And uh, man, yeah, if you do a podcast, I can't wait because I love hearing you talk, man. You are a super smart dude with a, a lot of really cool knowledge. So if you do that, I uh, will be listening. All right, now we are in the top five. Top five. You guys ready? Ready. Yep. All right. Now, uh, MZ, let's hear your number five. My number five deals with sickness, disease, and hauntings. Uh, it's another one of these films that that it, it feels very secluded. It has a very isolated feel to it, which amplifies the, the horror uh, that holds within. <clears throat> um, it's done with... Uh, it, it, it tackles the, the the material with a very serious tone, uh, uh, but there's also a certain amount of ambiguity involved because you just don't know what's going on and why it's happening. But when when it's all laid out, it's it becomes very terrifying, and then when you realize at some at a certain point in the film that it can be carried down. That's when it gets even scarier, you know. So uh, this film, uh, very well acted, very well directed, beautiful cinematography. Love this film. It is Relic. Nice. Uh, MZ chose Relic as his number five. All right. Uh, Aries, your number five. Uh, my number five has already been mentioned, so I'm not going to spend too much time on it, but it was a, a beautiful movie to look at. If you had described this movie, I would not, I would have passed on it just because of what it was, if, you know, the genre, but come to find out it was done so well. It was such a, a, a great movie to watch. This movie is a uh, little monsters. All right. Little monsters was Aries number five. Raven shadow. Let's hear yours. My number five was also mentioned previously, uh, and I love, um, while I've not read maybe the source material, um, I've, I've heard a lot of Dead songs over the years, um, and I do love uh, this next evolution of uh, Nicolas Cage. I, like, I'm, I'm totally all in with what this guy does. So uh, my number five is uh, Color of uh, Space. Color of Space. <laughs> Color out of space. <laughs> color out of space. Color out of space. Color out of space. Yeah. Color out of spaces. Oh, uh, that's what. Yeah, that's what your uh, fucking uh, uh, drawing books look like, right? Your color <laughs> coloring books. I mean, I'm really good at <laughs> coloring out coloring of space. Out of lines. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so Raven Chow chose Call Out of Space as his number five. My number five. This was a film. This was as good as it was for whatever reason. And once again, I think I said this on the show. I don't mean to put down the distribution company because uh, I love them. And, and one of their films had appeared on top 13 lists pr previously. If you guys remember, Der Samurai was very well represented on, on a list uh, several years ago. Um, but, you know, we watched a bunch of films from Artsploitation and they put out some really cool stuff. And uh, it's different. And it's kind of fringy and, uh, you know, exploitation and indie. And they put out some great stuff, but I, I didn't expect to see this film. And that film was one that we did uh, just, uh, like I said, in December. And it was also a, if I'm not mistaken, I believe it was another first-time um, director. 
And that would be the South Korean film Beasts Clawing at Straws. And this this just surprised me at how well executed this film was was done. Uh, it was directed by Kim Young Hoon, and uh, yeah, this this was his very first film. And if like I was just amazed at how flawlessly this was pulled off, and how everything made sense. And I don't know, just I really dug, I really dug this flick, and I hope. I uh, hope people check it out if they haven't already. So, yeah, my number five, Beasts Clawing at Straws. All right, MZ, let's hear your number four. Ooh, my number four is a film that deals with rejection, deals with loneliness, and it deals with how to cope with that loneliness through the means of a VCR player. <laughs> And uh, I just, I loved this flick. The, the performances here were really, really, really great. Uh, but it's, 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 the, uh, it's the acting prowess of uh, one Will Wheaton that uh, really caps this movie off. He is creepy as hell for someone who sits in a chair with a white background he is effectively creepy. Uh, and with that, brings that craziness through our main character. Uh, truly a disturbing uh, movie. One of the best. And uh, Rent-A-Pal must be seen. I loved it. All right. Rent-A-Pal, MZ's number four. Aries, let's hear yours. Uh, my number four has already been said a couple of times, but uh, I think one thing that hasn't been said about this movie is the, uh, the world this movie exists in was so great because this takes place in the future, but this could just could be tomorrow or it could be 20 years from now. It is left unknown. And that is so great about this. And the characters were so great in this. This movie is VFW. Oh, Okay. So, Aries number four, VFW. All right, Raven Channel, let's hear yours. Yeah, we're getting down to the wire. Uh, and it's funny, as I was kind of watching some trailers to get re familiar with some of the pictures, um, it just reminds me of why I don't watch trailers for stuff we do for the show. Like, I have either like Johnny Synopsis or he's saying it, and I'm like, I, I leave the room. You know, so it's all a surprise. Um, but once again, the trailer for this one, I'm like, oh, fuck, you know, kind of ruined it, or at least, I don't know, for me anyway. But my number four is uh, Antebellum. That's yeah, good, uh, I will agree that the uh, the trailer of that one, like, I if I think it's way better going completely cold because the, the film went, what, a good 20 minutes, and then it changed to what seemed like a different time, right? Right, right, and that was really kind of jarring. It was like, "What the fuck?" But in the trailer, right. you see, it looks like that there's kind of two different timelines. So yeah, so that trailer is is diff- it's difficult to make a trailer of that because you have to kind of show, you know, some of that. But um, but yeah, I think um, yeah, I think you're right. I think that that's it's a tough it's a tough one to make a trailer for, and and I agree that when you see it, it's like, oh shit, okay, well you just gave away a lot of stuff in the movie, so. All right, Raven Shadow number five. Uh, sorry, number four was Antebellum. All right, so we're getting down to the nitty gritty here. Top. Oh, I, actually, I got my four, and then we'll get in the top three. Uh, my four is a film that's already been mentioned, I believe, once or twice. Uh, this is a film we did at the beginning of the year, and it was just. It's one of those films that I think. I think. I think Aries might have mentioned this. Um, I don't remember who if it was Aries or MC. I'm sorry. Um, but anyways, one of you guys mentioned it, and uh, oh, it was Aries. It was Aries, and I, I think it, absolutely right. Like the first half of this movie is like, okay, yeah, this is kind of like a traditional kind of like zombie movie, and then about halfway through, it goes into this sort of meta view of what's going on, and it becomes a different film entirely, and. It's so smart the way that it plays out in seeing all these events happen 
that it's it's just such a cool movie and it's fucking hilarious. Uh, and so for me, my number four, it was hard to leave off uh, the top five because it was it was so good. Uh, number four, one cut of the dead. All right, MZ, you ready to break into this top three? Boy, am I! <laughs> All right, go ahead. All What's right. your number three? My number three. Okay. Very, uh, very vibrant movie. A very out of space movie. Uh, and it's also one that was mentioned before. Um, it's, it, it feels very apocalyptic. Uh, it's, oh man, it's, it, it, it feels very apocalyptic, but yet it feels like that there's actually life that precedes this, just not life in the way that we would ever experience again. Uh, it's a very colorful movie. It's a very woodsy movie. And it's got the great Nicolas Cage in it, Color Out of Space, bringing back Richard Stanley in in what I think is his best movie. Yeah. Uh, so definitely check it out. Color Out of Space. You'd be neglecting yourself if you've never seen this movie. All right. Made MZ's top three. Color Out of Space, number three. Aries, let's hear yours. Um, yeah, usually as we're getting down to this, this uh, low numbers, uh, fun is the key to uh, movies for me in this, in this uh, area. And this one holds true to that. This is a fun movie. This really pushes the boundary to reality as far as the kills go. It's a reality. You know, it's, this movie is supposedly set in reality, but, man, they push those boundaries. And it is so enjoyable. Um, and it is so fun, and it is it is funny, uh, and it's gruesome. It's just very enjoyable. This is why don't you just die? All right, Aries number three. Why don't you just die, Rave Shadow? I mean, Rave Shadow. No, I didn't mean that towards you, Rave Shadow. What's, <laughs> what's your number three? Really fucking mean, man. <laughs> Uh, no, I would I would echo the sentiments uh, of of what Aries said. You know, I mean, this picture had passion with a plucky spirit. It, I, 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 I every morning when I go to work, when I put my mask on and say one, two, three, uh, you know, evil can't stop me or whatever the fuck. It's uh, funny. Uh, last year, you had uh, you had a quote from a movie. You, you, you get these mantras from films. Last year, Tiger's. Uh, tigers aren't afraid, right, Raven Shadow? Tigers aren't afraid, and do, yeah. And, do you uh, say that every morning still? Sometimes, yeah. So, I, sometimes, I do them both because I know what I'm fucking. <laughs> uh, so I, I try to hedge my bets. Uh, but yeah, man. Um, fucking, why won't you just die? Why don't? Why don't you? <laughs> just die. All right. That's number your number three. three? Yeah, man. The fucking uh, teams. Let's make it the the unholy trinity because uh, my number three is also why don't you just die? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. So, yeah, this was uh, so okay. This one, this was a such a shocker, right? Like, I mean, how many Russian films have we seen? We I think at the time I think we'd seen Guardians and maybe one other one. Uh, we did another one later on in the year, Sputnik. But this yep. was, I think, maybe the second ever Russian film we've ever done. And there is just something so charming about this film, though. And there's, it's just so tense and just well acted and, and well written and well uh, executed. Everything about it is just and some of the violence and like it, it's that whole thing. I think we talked about with um, um you know, about talking about how Hitchcock said, you know, it's it's not easy to kill people, right? And I mean, the name of the movie, "Why Don't You Just Die," is 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 sort of a kind of a, you know leads you right into that. But yeah, this was a, a lot of fun, fun and very surprising, and and that's kind of why you know go to go back to my criteria. I wanted something that I feel people should really check out. Like this is a movie that I think is flying under the radar, and I think people should really watch. Uh, Why don't you just die? So yeah, look at that. Three in a row. 
Uh, me, Raven Shadow, and Aries all picked it as our number three film. All right. Whew. Getting there. This might be the, the, the quickest top 13 ever. But uh, MZ, let's go and hear your, your number two. My number two is a Western of sorts. Uh, it is violent, yet not overly bloody. It does have its gory moments, but it's not overly bloody. And it is just an awesome movie. And like I said, it's a Western, but it's a Western in a place that you would never expect it. You guys made it a three-way. I'm making it a four-way. Why don't you just die? Wow. Four in a row. Like, four in a row. All right. MZ's number two was Why Don't You Just Die. And here's the Blu-ray. Oh, Shit. look at you. You got the Blu-ray, huh? Yeah. Is that um is it an import? This is Arrow. Arrow, okay. This is the Arrow, Arrow release, yep. Awesome. And you picked that up after you, you we did it on the show, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I had to. Loved it. Cool. Uh MZ is number two. Why don't you just die? All right, Aries, let's hear your number two. All right. So this is where I differ from my usually fun movie. This movie is not a fun movie. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Uh, but this movie was so well done. This movie, as mentioned before, uh, Raven Shadow said it. This movie, it is spoiled by its trailer. Fortunately, I did not watch the trailer before watching this movie, so I did not know what to expect when watching this. Um, if you haven't watched the trailer and you know nothing about this, don't watch the trailer. Just check out this movie. This is such a good movie. Uh, this is Antebellum. Wow, okay. Antebellum. Uh, Aries number two. All right, Raven Shadow. Let's hear it. Uh, my number two is also not a fun movie. Um, there's actually nothing fun at all about it. There's no funny. Uh, there's no flippity doo doo, and there's no <laughs> flippity da da. There's no flippity da da, uh, and there's no you know you can do it. There's no Rob Schneider. Um, it's just uh, it's just hard times all around, Daddyo. Um, I know I would have I probably would have watched this uh, if it wasn't for the show, but. Hey, we did it for the show, and it still counts. So my number two is fucking uh, Uncut Gems, man. That was a fucking dope, fucking painful, fucking movie. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Raven Shadows number two was Uncut Gems. All right, so uh, let me write that one down. Okay, got that. And for me, uh, my number two. This was, uh, once again, as I mentioned, kind of going back and forth between some of these films. And I don't, I don't know if this is the second best movie of the year, once again, but it's one that stuck with me. And I, I just love so much about it. Like, it's got such a cool vibe to it, such a good look. And, like, I think it really portends uh, a great future for this director. Uh, obviously, he's done some other stuff in the past, and his name uh, recognition precedes him. Uh, that would be Brendan Cronenberg. And uh, my number two is Possessor. All right. So before we head into the number ones, what we'll do is we'll listen to a few more voice messages. And uh, let's uh, now, our boy uh, EF Contentment sent in a top five. So let's check out and see what he has to say. Hello, gentlemen. This is EF Contentment, and I'm just stopping by here with my top five first-time viewings um from 2020 not necessarily movies of 2020 and these movies are all sort of you know horror slash thriller slash what the fuck based basically movies that perhaps you guys have discussed or covered or even briefly mentioned in the past um and if not maybe you should so here we go number five the invisible man from 2020 uh, usually i watch horror films from a detached perspective and so it says a lot about this film that it really worked me over. Um, I just felt a lot of dread, horror, anguish, terror, despair, anxiety, all of the above for the main character played by Elizabeth Moss. And she's so good in the movie. I almost forgot that in real life she's a stupid Scientologist. Number four, The Visitor from 1979. Um, <laughs> I suppose <laughs> you can put this movie about... Space Jesus sending John Houston to Atlanta in order to stop Lance Henriksen from impregnating his wife with the space devil uh, in the category of movies 
that Ares, the god of war, would probably tell me to go fuck myself for recommending for the next Patreon takeover, a.k.a. the Death Wish Club Award, so I won't. Um, but that's where I'm coming from with this crazy movie, and I dug the hell out of it. Uh, number three, Color Out of Space from 2019. Um, some people would say that the term deliberately paced is a nice way of saying slow. I don't really agree. I distinguish it this way when it comes to movies. Bad movies are slow, but good ones are deliberately paced, and Color Out of Space is a good movie. Uh, slowly but surely, Richard Stanley worked his evil witchcraft on me, and by the halfway point, the movie had totally gotten under my skin, and I was creeped out. And the only moments of levity were whenever Nicolas Cage caged out. Uh, number two, Host from 2020, which we saw as part of uh, Monster Peace Theater. And it's probably my favorite viewing experience of 2020 because it's a movie that takes place on, on Zoom, over Zoom. And because of that, I didn't watch it on the big screen, um, the big screen in my house. Not I'm not an asshole. I didn't go to the theater. Um, but instead, I watched it on my desktop late at night with the lights off. And man, normally you'd have to pay an admission fee for the kind of ride this movie took me on. At least a couple times I turned around to make sure that no evil murder demons were in the room with me. Uh, so number one is Christmas Evil from 1980, uh, which <laughs> I thought was going to be a slasher movie. But it turned out to be a very sad movie, a very fascinating movie in what I would call the God's Lonely Man subgenre, along with movies like uh, Taxi Driver fade to black and joker these are all movies about emotionally or psychologically unstable guys specifically men in a world that couldn't give a shit about them and so they end up making themselves known to the world in the worst ways possible but i thought it was a great film unpleasant but a great film and i'll be watching it every december because i'm a weirdo um but anyway that's my top five um <laughs> uh, take care and be well gentlemen awesome a great list yeah. <laughs> and uh, I, I forget what episode we did it on, but we actually did The Visitor. I heard you laughing, MZ. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah, you remember, remember that, that fucking movie. <laughs> yeah. I don't think uh, I, I don't think Aries watched that one with us. No. <clears> the, <throat> skate, the, the, the skating rink scene. Oh, my God. John Houston. John Houston going down an, uh, uh, an, the elevator. An, an infinite oh, escalator. flight of yeah. stairs. That was the escalator. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Um, and that score. That oh score. my god. Holy shit. That scores. That that's a thing of magic, man. Oh. That is magic. <laughs> I'll try to find out what episode that was, uh EF, in case you wanna go listen to that. Um yeah, it was something. That's all, that's for sure. Did Raven Shout, do you remember watching that? I think that was early on. I think I was still second uh on the second segment during that part. I don't know I don't, about that. I think I think. Or, or that or that was when you thought the movies were optional for you. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you don't have to, you don't have to watch the fuck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't have to watch a movie for a movie review show. <laughs> you know, you don't get to watch them. All right, we did it on episode seventy. Oh really? It was the same episode as Grabbers, Raven Shadow, Grabbers. Oh, then maybe I'm maybe I'm fibbing. No, I watched that. Yeah, that was treat. <laughs> you don't remember. <laughs> so EF, if you want to go hear that, that was way back in the second year, uh, episode seventy. Um, let me see if we had any guests or anything on that one. Um, I want to say I thought we did, but you know, seven years ago and all that. Um, let's see. Um, I don't know. It doesn't. It doesn't say. Although, although I can see that Sir Isaac uh, and Mercy Roulette both called in for that episode, so you could tell that was the early days. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't. I don't know if we had any guests on, but yeah, man, that that movie is a is a fucking trip. That's for sure. Oh, that's great. So awesome, EF. As always, thank you for uh, your your thoughts and. Uh, it's cool. I'm, I, I, it was cool hearing him pick uh, host because uh, that was a, uh, you know, we did that for the first Monster Piece Theater, so it was kind of cool to to have them, you know, once again another film that we had did on the show, 
uh, that popped up on his list. So, all right, we have. I think there's one more voice message for this episode. Let me just double check that. Yeah, I think so. So this is from uh, our boy who he uh, sent us some artwork a couple years back, and uh, since then he has kind of formed a uh, a, a creative relationship with uh, our old friend Donna Mars, and uh, he is drawing the Deadites comic, which I believe we're all appearing in, or most of us, anyways. And um, I've seen uh, most of the first issue, and it looks fucking amazing. So I can't wait for this to be done, and I can't wait to talk more about it. And uh, that man is calling him right now. The artist behind the Deadites comic is Matchul of Omaha. Trick or Treat Radio, come out and play. Hey, Happy New Year, guys. It's Matchul Omaha. Hey, buddy. I saw Wolfie post something about uh, wanting top five lists. So I thought I'd do my top five number one or issue one comics I bought this year. Nice. Uh, number five from Boom Studios. We only find them when they're dead. Number four, Bat- Batman Catwoman, Black Label. Number one, DC comic, whatever the fuck. It was fun. <laughs> I liked it. Uh, number three is called Cult Classic Creature Feature by Volt Comics. Number two, Hellboy and the BPRD, uh, Her Fatal Hour and the Sending. I guess the one shot. It's pretty awesome. And then my number one is called Post Americana by Image Comics. It is a pretty wild, uh, post-apocalyptic science fiction action, a little bit of comedy. Um, It's pretty awesome. I think I'm going to keep buying that one. Anyway, I hope you guys had a wonderful new year and can't wait to hear the show. Love you. Bye. Awesome, Matchwell Boma. Thanks, buddy. Always a pleasure to hear from you. Uh, can't wait to see your some more of your art, and uh, uh, thanks for calling in, man. Hope hopefully twenty twenty one is a great year for you and for everyone. Uh, Raven Chat, are you familiar with any of those uh, titles? Yeah, um, it's uh, you know Batman, Catwoman. I know who they are. Uh, <laughs> but no, you heard of them? I heard of them. Yeah, it's up and coming, Hungry Young Tiger. Uh, but no, it's exciting. Uh, I'm actually I'm I am looking forward to reading more in uh 2021 because i i found something that will help me drugs no <laughs> uh, new glasses no uh, but i can put i can put readers over my uh my progressives and that allows me to like read the same way i like to read like, are you gonna have like the giant blue blockers on yeah i got yeah well i ain't fucking <laughs> i ain't gonna video blue it blockers. <laughs> scott summer's uh collection Oh man! <laughs> right, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna try reading again. Awesome. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Did you do you know of any other books that uh, he he uh, mentioned? Uh, Batman and Catwoman. You said that already. Po- uh, Post Americana sounds pretty cool. Yeah, it does. So, all right, Matthew. Well, thank you for that. Thank you for the recommendations. And if anyone's interested in checking out some number ones or you're looking to get in some comics, uh, it's a good place to start. Is you know he listened to his top five uh, issue number ones. So uh, very cool list. I appreciate that, buddy. All right, now we're getting down to the nitty gritty here. This is this is technically the nitty gritty. We're down to our number one films now. MZ, you get to go first. I'm curious, what is your number one film of 2020? Yes, the actually, nittiest of the gritty. Actually, hold on, MZ. Before you do that, I'm going to run down your top. Uh, do you want to d- run down your, your the 12? Sure, why not? Okay. Okay, so my top 13 to 2 is 13, Impetigore. 12, Little Monsters. Thir- uh, 11, Beach House. 10, Antebellum. 9, The Other Lamb. Eight, Extraordinary. Seven, The Lodge. Six, Possessor. Five, Relic. Four, rent a pal Three, Color Out of Space. Two, Why Don't You Just Die? And my number one film 
is a film that has surprisingly not been mentioned. Wow. I can't, I can't believe this. Uh, unless you guys are all thinking the way I am. This movie uh, has, it has some phenomenal, phenomenal camel work, a superb story, uh, uh, incredible acting, inc- uh, especially where you figure some of the scenes last four, five, six, seven, eight minutes long. Uh, and so blocking and, and remembrance of the lines uh, is all important. Uh, and uh, the tension of this film is just ratcheted by by uh, uh, by by uh, mysterious well not mysterious I shouldn't say but by uh, by phone calls by uh, information that's leaking in as the movie progresses of what the hell is going on I love this movie it's it this really to me was a no brainer as far as the other movies go. I had to think about it. This to me was an absolute no brainer. I, I had a feeling this was going to be my number one and it stayed there. I love this movie. I think this is done by a first time director too, if I'm not mistaken. And I, I really want to get this on Blu-ray. I got to have it. It's fantastic. The vast of night. Number one. Wow. Okay. Vast of Night, MZ's number one film of 2020. All right. <laughs> Raven Chow's like, what What movie? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. That I'm, actually, just, I'm just kidding. <laughs> that, in, a, in a one version, that was my number 10. Uh, <laughs> but there was like, yeah, that was the, the young, young, uh, young Lovecraft as like a cub reporter. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, yeah, like the 50s about, sci-fi kind of yeah. Deal, yeah. UFOs. But, and uh, We saw a lot of, like, we saw a lot of, like, similar themed pictures. So I had to go with that shit crazy Nicolas Cage. Well, it wasn't your turn. Yeah, why are you going? Yeah. <laughs> it's a fucking discussion podcast. Uh, I was just saying you look clueless, so I just said you didn't remember what the movie was. <laughs> and, and, in, and in case you're wondering, this is not a discussion podcast. You, this is a, a top 13 podcast. Yeah. You blew your load, yeah. man. If you recall, we really haven't been <laughs> discussing. We've just <laughs> been <laughs> explaining. Maybe that's the problem. Maybe we start looking at each other areas, okay? <laughs> wow. <laughs> All right. Uh, well... We'll still go in order, but I think, I think there's no surprise anymore. Uh, Aries, uh, what's your number one? Um, my number one, also like MZ, I am surprised at the lack of representation of my movie, of my number one in the list. But as of like last year, my number one, no one else even put it on their list. Yeah, And it is appearing that way is what's going to happen unless, Johnny, you also pick this because I know <laughs> I know Raven Shadow didn't. Um, this is such an enjoyable movie. It was fun from the start to finish. Um, the star of this movie has gone above and beyond to separate himself from his early roles where he was ran into the risk of being typecast. And he has gone far beyond separating himself. And it is such a joy to watch him work now. The movie is Guns Akimbo. Wow. Okay. There he always comes out of fucking left field. I kind of love it. I was expecting expecting December, but hey. My choice, butt boy. (laughs) (laughs) All right, so Aries, his number one is Guns Akimbo. Once again, I I have a feeling. I I have a feeling that we're all going to have different number ones again this year, (laughs) especially because I know what Raven (laughs) Shadows is. But uh, all right, Raven Shadow, let's make it official, official. What's your number one? Yeah, it's like fucking Matchel Omaha fucking voicemails. All new number fucking ones. You know what I mean? <laughs> so listen, you know, my number one choice um, doesn't need, you know, my help to fucking, you know, put butts in seats, I guess. But it's on the fucking list. And I think it's you got fucking some balls to make a sequel to a fucking beloved Kubrick classic. Um Oh, but, actually, okay. You oh, yeah. reload. I thought you were going somewhere else. Go ahead. Jesus. Uh, hey, oh. 
he doesn't know what he's doing. <laughs> no, he, no, he's he's immediately switching it. Yeah, now. he switched. <laughs> <laughs> I wrote it down. <laughs> but you, you can uh, make a secret. What? Uh, what? I, I actually I forgot that we didn't run down uh, Aries or yours uh, top thirteen. I remembered, but do we do it? Can we do it? Yeah, do yours, and then we'll do yours after, since you're doing yours. Now. So good. All right. My fucking top 13 so far is... I'm, I'm going to check your work and make sure you're right. <laughs> yeah. Get your red pen out. Yep. Uh, number 13, the platform. Number 12. Um... Come on. Did you, you forgot? Get... Oh, God. Little monsters. Johnny. Oh, little monsters. Little... Uh, number 11, red pal. God damn Back... it. Uh, number nine, Phantom Thread. Number eight, VFW. Uh, number seven, oh, um, the reading accent coming in. <laughs> number six, Metamorphosis. Number five, Color Out of Space and Time. <laughs> the lines. Uh, number four, Antebellum. Number three, Why Won't One of You Just Die? Um, two, <laughs> and uh, my number one is uh, The Doctor Sleep, man. The Doctor Sleep. <laughs> the Doctor Sleep. The Doctor Sleep. The Doctor, the doctor sleep. of the Sleep. The doctor of the Sleep. <laughs> it was fucking dope. I liked the world. There was some kid violence. Uh, I want to see the, uh, the, the director's cut. Um, it was good. It, to, to take a, a sequel to The Shining in novel and the film and do its own thing was pretty rad. So, uh, well, yeah. A sequel to what? The Shining. I thought you said The Shining. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. All right. So Raven Shadow, you're number one. Doctor Sleep. You love you, you love the Ewan McGregor, don't you? I do love the Ewan McGregor. Is he better as uh, um, uh, Danny Torrance or Obi Wan Kenobi? Uh, I, I, I let's see. Cause I don't know. Cause in those fucking prequels, he didn't do anything but stay in the fucking ship and had bad mullets. Oh, in the first one, he did. The first one, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got his beard. <laughs> He's the high ground. He did, yeah. All right. Uh, so let me run down my top 13. Uh, number 13, Empedagor. Number 12, The Lodge. Number 11, Relic. Number 10, Amulet. Number 9, The Platform. Number 8, After Midnight. Number 7, VFW. Number 6, Color Out of Space. Number 5, Beasts Clawing at Straws. Number 4, One Cut of the Dead. Number 3, Why Don't You Just Die?, Number two, Possessor, and my number one film of the year. Uh, I'm actually surprised that this didn't appear a little bit more, but I think uh, MZ probably um, uh, disqualified it, so that's probably why. But this uh, this film, this might have been one of the most tense watching experiences I've ever had in my entire life, watching a movie. And... It was just fucking relentless from the from the open almost the opening scene till like you know till the fucking climax. This film uh, just blew me away, and these 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 guys, the directors, are becoming uh, one of one of my most um, eagerly anticipated uh, directing duo, and that would be the Safdie brothers of Benny and jo- and Josh Safdie. Uh, I never thought I would ever choose a film as my number one picture of the year that stars Adam Sandler. <laughs> but right. 2020, here we are. <laughs> uh, my number one film of the year. This was almost no contest. Uncut Gems. Right. Fucking God damn it, this film. Kevin Garnett got the fuck. <laughs> You got that fucking uh, little uh, little doll uh, gem that, that he had. <laughs> uh, this film was just un fucking believable. So uncut gems is my number one. There you have it. I'm uh, actually kind of like surprised. This is a very diverse list. We have just to uh, take a look. We have 31 different films that show up on the list. And only one film ended up on all of our lists. Uh-huh. That's the Why Won't You Just Die? Not Color Out of Space, probably, right? No, Why Don't You Just No, Yeah, Why Don't You Just Die? Oh, yeah, Why Don't You Just Die, yeah. So that, oh, yeah. So, and then we had, let me see, four 
other films were on three lists. And there was uh, at least, let, let me see how many, there was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 films that were only on one person's list. Wow. That, this might be the most diverse uh, that we've ever done. Because this is going to be tough. This is going to be tough to kind of well, not be tough. I mean, I can tally it pretty easily, but um, it's yeah, it's going to be an interesting list. <laughs> so, I guess what we'll do is I'm going to tally it up. Um, if you guys want to talk about some honorable me- honorable mentions, uh, that might be a good discussion. You guys can do it. I'm going to be a little bit tuned out because I'm going to be uh, doing some math. So you guys can kind of take the reins and maybe talk about some uh, some honorable mentions that. You know, almost made the cut, but didn't quite. All right, yeah, uh, I have three on my short list that 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 were just gnawing at me about whether or not they should be on my list, but ultimately they did not. Uh, one was Twelve Hour Shift, mm-hmm. um, simply because it almost made it because of the amount of action they were able to pack into such a short time frame. Uh, pretty much like the film itself, really, uh, or the film's uh, premise is what I meant to say. And uh, plus, it also has you know Mick Foley, Angela Bettis, you know. So that it was, it was a fun watch. It was an enjoyable watch, but ultimately did not make my list. The next one I put in was Amulet. That was just a total mind fuck of a movie, and. Uh, I, but like I said, it's uh, when we reviewed it, I'm not going to pretend like I understood what the hell was going on. You know, so ultimately, that did, that's why it didn't make my list. And third film was a film that you, uh, a couple of you guys mentioned already called The Platform. I just, it was a great flick, great premise, uh, kind of a gross movie. <laughs> uh, but uh, again, uh, ultimately did not end up on the list. I felt that in Pedagore, that which was my number 13, uh, it, 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 I was entertained more by it. So those are the three that didn't make my list. Those are my honorable mentions. My short list had uh, come to daddy uh, with the... Yeah, I was actually bro- surprised I wasn't on MCs. Hmm. I remember you dug that film, or you were looking forward to it, because uh, it's oh it's, no no, it's got your boy Elijah. Yeah, yeah, no, no, Elijah's my boy, definitely. But uh, I like him. I, I'm more entertained by him from him behind the camera rather than in front of it. I'm not uh, saying he puts in a bad performance; it's just my preference. Uh, First love, I thought was interesting back in the day, but really didn't have enough to uh, hold on. That was the the boxer. And the yeah, girl. Yeah, Takashi Mika, I remember. See, I, I remember all the movies already, Channel. <laughs> so, I got a memory. I don't get fucked up. All the time. <laughs> don't forget, he's got like 75 computer screens in front of him. Yeah. <laughs> he's like a Norad. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, fucking, yeah, that's a problem. Uh, 12 hour ship was a thing. Uh, <laughs> the Mortuary Collection. <laughs> Made me chuckle. No, <laughs> You're just naming titles now. Uh, Butt Boy. Uh, Butt Boy. <laughs> Dreamland. That was terrible. That was not good. I'm just, I'm just naming titles. Aries, what do you think? Um, as far as what hasn't been mentioned already, um, if I had to go back into the list and reconsider some of the movies I'd bypassed to begin with, The Wave kind of stands out to me. Yeah. That was kind of a, a surreal type movie that was enjoyable. Um, I would have re- I would have considered that if I had to uh, go back and look at more movies. Like why, don't you, why don't you lift why, Aries? Why don't you list off your uh, thirteen to two? You never g- did get to do that. Oh yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. Oh okay, um, yeah okay. Uh, Boar, Becky, Arkansas, twelve hour <laughs> shift, Ar- Arkansas. <laughs> I wonder if anyone's going to pick up on that one. Uh, 12 hour shift, uh, blood machine, uh, 
Five Bust Peninsula, One Cut of the Dead, Little Monsters, VFW, Why Don't You Just Die, Antebellum, Guns Akimbo. All right. I do have the uh, the final master <laughs> list. All right. Lay it on me, my man. Let me just, I just need to see, actually, I just need to see if we do have a few ties. So, yeah, because there's a, there's a few um, that were, <laughs> there were three films that were number ones that didn't show up on anyone else's list. So we have a tie, like a, basically like a five-way tie um, on for 13 points. So it's going to be difficult to... Um, figure out which which is let me think I'm just trying to think of how we, if we've done this in the past typically what we do is if it appears on more than one list that gets precedence that gets bumped up but if it only appears on one list um, I don't know if we've encountered this before so um, I'm just going to have to do them by I'll just do it by um order in which they show up when I sorted them. So that's that's just what we'll have to go go by because there's no other way to, to do it. Um, well, I mean, I think they would all just hold that ranking and then the next movie would just skip. So it would be like three number nines and then a you know a number 13. Uh, well, I don't like doing ties. So, oh, okay. so we're just going to keep it as the top 13 films. So there's not like you know, like 18 films and a couple are tied. Like, I, don't, I just don't like doing that. So, Oh, no, no, I'm not saying more than 13 films. Oh. If, if, if Because they're tied, they all hold, like, number nine, but then you skip 10, 11, and okay, 12, gotcha. and the next movie in the list is 13. I got gotcha. you. Um, what I'll do is I'll just, I'll give it a number, but with the caveat that, you know, that that is the case. So, all right, master list for Trick or Treat Radio 2020, our uh, kind of collective list of the top... 13 films of 2020. Number 13, Relic, uh, that appeared on two lists and uh, had 12 points. Uh, number 12, Dr. Sleep, uh, only appeared on one list, and it was a number one. Uh, so the next three I'm going to name are all tied, basically, but I'm giving them uh, a number value. So just consider them as, like, tied. Uh, number 11, uh, Guns Akimbo was uh, appeared on one list as the number one. Uh, the Vast of Night appeared on one list as number one. Uh, so that would be number 10. Number nine appeared on two lists. This would be Rent-A-Pal. Number eight, Little Monsters. It ended up appearing on three lists, but uh, was relatively low on two of them. So uh, that's why it ends up here. And it was it was tied with the same amount of points but because it appeared on more lists, it ranks a little bit higher. So, uh, number seven, one cut of the dead. Number six, possessor appeared on two lists. Number five, VFW appeared on three lists. Number four, uncut gems appeared on two lists. Was number one for me and was number two uh, for someone else that wasn't MZ. <laughs> Uh, that was uh, Raven Channel, right? Yeah. Raven Channel was number two. Uh, number three. I'm actually surprised by this one. I, I don't remember this uh, being quite so loved when we watched it, but maybe I just have a bad memory about this one. But number three, Antebellum. So number three movie of the year. Number two, Color Out of Space. And your number one film for 2020 on Trick or Treat Radio's master list is to, to the surprise of nobody because who he said it was the only one that appeared on four lists, all four lists. Why don't you just die? Our number one film of 2020. And you know what? That's a very fitting title for the year 2020 yeah <laughs> 2020 can just go die and, and it did this one had uh by far like the most amount of points it had so uh it had 45 points and the way we do it is if if it appears number one it gets 13 points so we kind of go like depending on where it appears it gets the sort of like 
rev- like the opposite number. So if it's number 13, it gets one point. If it's number one, it gets 13, uh, 13 points. So this one was number three, number three, number three, number two. So because of that, it appeared so high on four lists, Why Don't You Just Die is the number one film of 2020. You guys surprised? A little bit. Nope. Rave Chat? No, no. It, it's a good movie. It's a great movie. Rave Chat, are you just fall like asleep? checking out or what? Did he fall asleep? No, oh, no. <laughs> we're talking to yeah, you. This is a yeah, discussion. Now we're in the discussion phase. Now part we're in the discussion phase. Come yeah. on. Yeah, why don't we just die? Russian craziness. I didn't ask for a comment. <laughs> are you surprised? <laughs> oh wow! Uh, this 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 is this might be our worst ever top thirteen. It fell flat. How man. do you manage? How do you manage to live so long? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that is uh, our, our top thirteen. What uh, man? This was a really fucking interesting year of film, and mm. uh, yeah, I'm 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 actually surprised by some of these. Uh, I actually had no idea what you guys were going to pick. And looking at uh, our picks for each other, nobody uh, was right about the number one, which isn't surprising given how much, uh, you know, how crazy this year was. But, um, Aries, I'm surprised Uncle Peckerhead didn't even make your list. Um, A a punk zombie movie? You know what? It it seems like it'd be right up my alley, but yeah, yeah, no, not quite number 15. You know, maybe if it was like a top 20. (laughs) <laughs> or a top 50 and and Raven Channel I'm actually I thought for sure why don't you just thought it was going to be yours yeah, I, mean, I mean obviously it was up there yeah it was but, up there I mean I mean I mean, Uncut Gems was fucking amazing I mean uh, I really I really like the Doctor Sleep so I mean all all three were, were were great pictures yeah absolutely and um, MZ if you had included One Cut of the Dead would that have been in uh, your top five, would you say? Uh, there's a good chance it would be in the top five somewhere because that was an awful lot of fun. Yeah. All right. Well, there you go. It's our top 13, the master list. Uh, I didn't mention um, my honorable mentions because I was um, getting the uh, master list ready. But uh, some of the ones for me, I'm actually, let's see, May, uh, May the Devil Take You Two. Uh, I thought it was a really great sequel. It had some great horror. I was actually a little surprised it didn't appear in anyone's list. I thought it might be low, not like, you know, top of the list. But it, um, that one, uh, <laughs> I didn't have the heart to put it on my list, but Deerskin was an interesting flick. <laughs> yeah, it was. Yeah. <laughs> um, Antebellum was actually on my honorable mention, so it almost made the list. I literally had it on there till like the very end. And I decided to put Impedigore as 13 because that's one that I, I just really uh, just really enjoyed. And um, anything for Jackson I thought was uh, was worthy of, of mention, but ultimately didn't make it. Um, and Little Monsters as well. You guys, I think most of you guys had it on your lists as well. So, uh, so yeah, there you go. But, um, yeah, crazy. Uh, super surprised by some of the stuff. And uh, we all had different number ones, which is just crazy again to do that two years in a row, I believe. So, uh, all right. I think we got all the voicemails. Let me just double check them. And then if so, we're just going to wrap this up. Um, Year end. Let me see. I think we got them all. Yeah. Yeah, we got to them. Uh, we got to all the voice messages. So uh, we appreciate everyone who sent in a voice message and uh, uh, participated in giving us your top fives. Um, it's always great to hear from you guys. And uh, I think we'll wrap this one up then. Uh, do you guys have any final comments for 2020? Uh, if you do, just say them in your goodbye. Starting with MZ. I got nothing to say. Thank you for everybody sticking around. We'll see you in 2021. Arrivederci, douchebags. Aries. Yeah. yeah, so long, 2020. Goodbye. <laughs> Good riddance. <laughs> All right, Raven Shadow. All right, go fuck yourself, 2020. <laughs> um, you know, maybe let's let's maybe this next year can maybe suck a little bit less. Uh, so live fast, love hard, survive with your mask on. 
<laughs> I, I like it, man. I like it. All right. So, yeah, I appreciate uh, all you guys sticking with us through the through the year. This is a tough year. And, you know, just for us, obviously, there was a lot of different things going on. And we, we ended up, um, well, at the kind of mid last year, we we're all in one uh, camera. And then we went to two when we uh, when I moved and we had two studios. And now there's fucking four boxes. I feel like we're either the uh, Hollywood Squares or the Brady Bunch. I'm not sure yet. But uh, I'm glad that we're able to continue to do this all year despite the complications, I guess I guess you could say. And, um, you know, it was, uh, it was a lot of fun to uh, just continue to do it and watch some, some awesome movies with you guys and just to hang out with you guys. And I think it's all very important in, in this in this time because uh, it's very easy to sort of get uh you know get into your own head when when you don't get to see too many people right so uh it's great to be able to have this outlet and hopefully you guys the listeners out there have gained uh something from this and you know you guys can always tune in live and hang out with us we do uh all the stuff that we do on discord with the monsterpiece theater all that stuff for uh patreon uh, you know, it's just a, just a way to kind of all kind of hang out and, and, and kind of make this all a little bit better. We don't know how much longer we're going to be go- going through all this, but, um, you know, hopefully, hopefully things, uh, are, are on the, on the way up. So, uh, we appreciate all you guys have done sticking with us for the entire year and, uh, to, uh, 2021, I can't imagine it's going to be any worse than 2020, but I'm not going to officially say that because it can always get worse, but, um. So yeah, everyone stay safe out there. Thank you for tuning in for uh, you know, for the for the year 2020 and uh, hopefully this will be a much better year for all of us. So, till then, we'll see you guys on the weekly show. See you. <laughs>